The bright spots on series are really exciting because they represent somewhat of a window into the processes that are occurring in series subsurface. And what we've learned from looking at all of these hundreds of bright spots on series is that uh, these are modern processes. Uh, the bright spots are likely forming and being modified on the surface in the present day. When folks think about asteroids, they might think about dead chunks of rock that are floating around space. And what we see with Ceres is that uh, the, the body of rock is actually alive and the processes are modifying the surface even in the present day. And when we're talking about the bright spots on Ceres, what we're seeing is an indication that there are liquid brines potentially in the subsurface even in the present day uh, that are rising to the surface and becoming these bright spots. And that tells us that there has to be a process that is providing energy uh, to drive these fluids to the surface. We found that there are over 300 bright spots on Ceres, and we've grouped these into four different classifications based on associated geologic features. So those include bright spots like we find in Ocker Crater. These are the, the brightest spots on the surface of Ceres that occur on crater floors. Uh, but by number, what we found is that most bright spots actually are found in crater rims. They're, they uh, are found on the rims of craters and streak down crater rims toward the floors of the craters. And uh, there are hundreds of these bright spots that likely were formed via the excavation of bright material that either already existed in the subsurface or had formed in a previous impact event, something like uh, an octer like impact event. As a geologist, you tend to correlate things that are very bright with something that's quite young. Um, but Ceres itself is billions of years old. Um, and since we've been studying Okator in detail, we've found that these bright regions in the crater are maybe only a few million years old. So I really want to try and understand why you have these very, very young regions on the surface of something that's so old. Because that suggests there's some kind of recent active processes going on in the body that created them. And that's fascinating. These mater bright materials are made of salt, so we think that probably how they formed was the salt was in solution in some water, and then that water was down underneath the surface, it got transported to the surface, and then um, the water was lost on Ceres' surface, because it's a vacuum, so it's not going to be stable, and then you're left behind with these salt deposits on the surface. So they indicate that there was probably some kind of liquid water for a short amount of time underneath the surface under Akator, and that's how they formed. The salts that we see in Okato Crater um, are a similar composition to salts that we find in Mono Lake in California on the Earth. Um, of course, the salts in Mono Lake probably had, didn't have anything to do with the big impact like Okato Crater does, but it's interesting that you can have these similar materials found in different um, places that were formed by different processes.